ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. Our matriarch Sarah dies, apparently because of the almost consummation of the sacrifice of her son Isaac. Whatever reason it is, our rabbis really think that her time to die had come. And this was the event that maybe was the catalytic force that brought about her demise in this world. Abraham cries, he eulogizes his wife, and of course he looks for a place to bury her. But he is a stranger in this land, he owns no land, so he goes to the people that live in the vicinity, he goes to Ephron, and he says he wants to acquire a plot to bury his wife. It's called Me'arat HaMachpela. Machpela means kaful, double. According to our rabbis, Adam and Eve are buried there, all the patriarchs will be buried there, very important people are buried there. So this Ephron says, why not? Listen, you are a guest of ours, the land is yours, take it, it's all yours. But Abraham insists, he wants to pay for it. And actually Ephron asks for an exorbitant sum of money and for those times. Abraham doesn't bargain with him. Pays cash, according to the Bible, over la socher. He gives him money that is easily transmitted, easily spent anywhere. Everybody recognizes the value of those coins. Why did Abraham do that? Didn't he know that God had promised him the land of Israel? He told him, go from north to south, east to west. All this is going to be yours and of your descendants. Why does he have to buy it? Maybe Abraham knew it was going to take 400 years until our ancestors were going to settle in the land of Israel. First, they would have to go into Egypt. They'd have to spend 210 years in slavery in Egypt, 40 years in the desert, in his own lifetime, and that of his children in the land of Israel. There'll be 400 years before the land is really going to be conquered and become an inheritance of the Jewish people. If that is so, if he knew that, because God had told him, and Abraham surely believed the promise of God, why did he have to go and buy something? Maybe Abraham wanted to do something himself. Not only that God is going to give him, he wanted to participate somehow in that as well. You know, when our ancestors were in Egypt, God took them out of Egypt. They weren't able to do anything for themselves. In the desert, God protected them at all times. But when they came into the land of Israel, they had to start doing the conquest with their own arms as well. God protected them, but they had to do something as well. I think there's a very important lesson in what Abraham did. He wanted to participate with God. He knew that God was going to give him the land, but he wanted to be a shutaf. He wanted to be associated with what God is going to do. I think in our own lives, God guides our lives, there's no question about it. God guides the destiny of history, but man has to do whatever he can himself. You have to participate in the education of your children. One has to learn by himself. In the last instance, it's what I do for myself, yet, we need our teachers, we need our parents, we need the help of others. So let us bear in mind, while there are forces outside that will help us, there is a society that helps us, a lot depends on what we do by ourselves. And according to Jewish tradition, there is a Yiddish saying that bracha, blessing, does not come into empty hands. You have to do something yourself, or as we say in Spanish, Help yourself and God will help you as well.